Hey guys, this is Eden. Thank you again for joining me for another episode. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be leaving off from this iris neural network we made last time to test whether a flower is which type of iris. And we're going to be moving on, still using this network, but modifying it to use our own data. Because when you use a neural network to solve these problems in the real world, you're almost never going to have something nice like sklearn that just kind of gives you the data you need. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is come over to the UI, UCI machine learning repository. Um, they have a lot of cool data sets. So if you go to this link right here, you'll see a data set for breast cancer. So we're gonna want to go ahead and go to the data folder and download this. So the one we want is this right here, the, uh, so this right here, the second one, breast cancer, Wisconsin data. If we click on that, we should see this is the actual data right here. Now it looks pretty confusing. So let's go ahead, right click, save link as, and I'm going to save mine to, which I had the folder name right here. We just want to save it to the same directory as we'll be working with for our, wherever our program is. And I'm going to name it breastcancer.data. Save it there. Awesome. So now that we've got there, if we go to this breast cancer Wisconsin names and click on this, we can actually see what each of these is. So right here, we see the first thing we have, because if we go back, you see a bunch of numbers, right? Oh, wrong one. So if we're just here, we see a bunch of numbers. Uh, there's, I think, 11 numbers in total. And if we go back to this names, it will tell us what each one of those represents. So the first one, is the ID number. So that's probably not gonna be very important to us. Clump thickness, uniformity of cell size, all this other stuff. And importantly, the last one, the class, is two for a benign and four for a malignant. So basically what we wanna do is using all of these data, the two through 10, these data points, we wanna predict uh, whether this is a benign or malignant tumor, breast, or yeah, breast cancer tumor. So let's get to it. So now that we have that saved, and I'm just using the neural network right here. This is the neural network that we made in the last episode. So if you haven't seen that, go to the description and definitely check that out. Oh, and just another reminder, the code is also in the description below. I have it on GitHub if you wanna follow along with the code there. So the first thing we need is we don't need sklearn anymore, right? Now we're getting our data set by yourself. Cool. So I'm gonna seed it as zero so that we all see the same data. And this is the same as last time. We just need our sigmoid and our sigmoid prime. Those are our activation functions and the derivative of our activation function. And now here's where things get a little different, right? So last time we used sklearn to get our data. Now we're actually going to want to load it ourselves. So the first thing we're wanna, gonna wanna do is uh, this right here. So I'm using numpy to generate this array from the text. That's what this function does, as it might sound. So there's another method called, I think, load CSV with NumPy that works very similarly. Um, this just happened to work better in this case. So we give it the name of our file. So we call it breastcancer.data. The delimiter is what separates each data point. So if we go back and actually look at, where is it? Our data right here, we see it's all separated by commas. Next, we need missing values, and I put a question mark here, and what that's for is if we actually look in our data, we'll see these question marks in our data, and you know, if a computer sees a question mark and it tries to convert that to an integer, well, that's probably not gonna work out very well. So we need to replace those. We can either get rid of all those data points or replace them, and we don't wanna get rid of that entire row, right? There's no reason to get rid of this entire row when we have all this other good data. So we can just replace it with something I replace it with one. Now, whether or not this is a good choice, uh, meh, we could probably come up with something better, but this this will work for us. So the next thing we're gonna want to do is, just like last time, we are going to actually get, we're gonna separate the training data and the test data. So our data X is gonna be our, sorry, we'll do that later. I mean the uh, input and the output, or the X and the Y. So the X is gonna be everything from the second column to 
the second to last column. So if we look right here, we see our, the first thing we have is the ID number, which is not important. Everything in between these is important for the X, for the input. All of these are input, things like the size of it and all these things are what we use to determine whether it's malignant or not. And then what we have after that is for the Y, we have the just the last column, just this column, the four, the two, that's all we need to know to uh, tell whether or not it's malignant or not. So you might be like, well, what's this little colon thing right here? This is kind of weird. If you've never seen this format before, it might be um, definitely a little weird. And essentially what it's saying is that if we actually look at data, right, it looks like each one of these rows is its own array. And then each one of these arrays contains these 11 digits right here. So we're essentially saying when we put this colon here, we say we want to take every row and from every row, we want to get these columns. So we're getting every row and then the last column. So this separates our data into the X and the Y. And then what we want to do is if you remember from last time, we want to convert our data into one hot format because that's just what works best with a neural network. So to do that, we can make an array of zeros. And this array of zeros will be the same size as our Y data, except for it will have two columns because one column for malignant and one column for benign. And then we can have a simple for loop with an if statement to determine, well, if we see a two, um, I forget, is that is that benign or malignant? That's pretty important differentiation, isn't it? Let's go check that really quick. Uh, oh, I think it's probably right down here. Yep, so two is benign and four is malignant. Cool. So if it's two, then we are going to say the first column is going to be one. And if it's benign, then our second column in our data Y will be one. So this is the differentiation between benign and malignant in our Y data. Cool. So the next thing moving on right here is we're not going to plot this. It's going to look really chaotic if we do, just because there's so many more variables now. But what we are going to want to do is actually still mix up the data just like we were before. So right here, all we need to change is instead of iris X and iris Y, it's just going to be data X and data Y. Cool. So again, we're not going to plot this. It would, it, this is already chaos enough. We don't want to see 11 or 10 variables on here. That would be ridiculous. Um, and the next thing we want to have right here, we're changing the amount of hidden nodes. Now this is very variable. I haven't tested this too much, but I just got better results when I used 25. Um, again, this still isn't a very complex problem, or it's it's certainly more complex than the iris example because we have more input variables, but it's still not too complex. So one hidden layer with 25 nodes should be good for us. Now, this will stay the same. Our, uh, bleh, lost my words, our forward propagation should stay the same. And now our training, we're going to need to change up a little bit. So the first thing we're going to want to do is, unlike last time, I'm actually going to want to keep track of our accuracy. Now, we could have done this last time. Um, I just wasn't really thinking about it. I want to keep track of our accuracy as we go. So I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the argmax of A out, which is 0 or 1, 0 for benign and 1 for malignant, right? Because A out is going to be two nodes, one for benign, one for malignant. Um, and then also take the argmax of y, and if they're equal to each other, then our accuracy is equal to one. So essentially what we're saying here is if our prediction equals the actual y, then we're gonna make accuracy one, otherwise it's zero, right? 100% accurate if we guess correct, if we guess incorrect, it's 0% accurate. Makes sense. So our loss can stay the same, and we can do the same thing throughout our neural network, right? We're not really changing this, we're using the same neural network as last time, we're just changing the data we use. Cool. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is we want to update our train test split a little bit. Um, instead of using 15, now I wanna use 15% of our data. I think that's one thing I might've changed up here. I'm not sure, was this, what was this? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't notice earlier, I added the train, the test split right here. This just means we're gonna use 15% of our data for testing and the other percent, which would be, you know, 85 for training. Cool. So if we come back down here, we can update this 
And essentially what we're going to do is num test is going to be the number of test data points. So the test split, so 15% times the length of all the data. And that's going to be the number of testing we have. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to split our data and except for just a flat 15, we're going to use this negative num test, negative num test everywhere. So we're using um, a percent, the 15% of the data and not just 15 data points. The next thing we're going to want to do is if we come down here, and again, this isn't too different. Um, the only thing I really want to change is again, keeping track of the accuracy as we go. So I'm going to create a new variable called correct. So it's how many we've guessed correctly, as you might guess. Um, I'm going to start at zero and we're going to add one to that every time we get one of these correct. And I forgot to return this over here. There's another thing. I'm sorry. We want to return accuracy. So right here, our accuracy, it's one if we're right, zero if we're wrong. Um, and then here, we'll call that C and we'll add one to correct if we guessed right. Otherwise, we will not add one. And then I'm just going to change this up a little bit so that we actually print out not just the loss, but also the accuracy. And our accuracy is just going to be equal to the amount we have correct divided by the total amount we have trained on up until this point. Cool. So we're also going to want to reset correct when we're done and our total, the actually, why do I have total there? I don't think that needs to be there. I bet. Um, cool. And I'm going to move this plot to one below this. Um, that way it's just a little neater. But same thing as before. Uh, there we go. And the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to need to update our accuracy, which is basically the same thing as before, right? The only thing I change is I put a comment in. <laughs> uh, and then we're good to go. So let's actually run this really quick. And hopefully we don't have any mistakes or not too many like last time. And this data set, I will say, is a bit more volatile than the iris data set. Um, try changing up some of the, I, I really recommend changing up some of these hyperparameters um, and some of the network configurations just to see what kind of differences happen. Oh, here we go, we're training. So we start off at very low accuracy, of course, because it's completely random. You can see we grow to 65, 49, 40, and we get all the way up to the 90s. So I think I'm letting, how long, how many epics do I have this going on for? Ah, oh, yes, I am going on for 1,500 epics. We probably don't need that many. Um, it looks like we're gonna stick around the 90s right now. So this should be pretty good. Awesome, I'm back. So that finished up. And you can see here we have a graph of our losses. As I said, it's quite a bit more volatile. You can see all these huge spikes right here. But as we get towards the end, we definitely uh, converge at this value right here. And we get a solid 97% accuracy. So that's pretty good. Um, we could. We should probably, if we were really doing this, we would do some more testing to make sure that this isn't overfitting, which is something we'll go over later. Um, but that's how you use your own data. So thanks for watching. Again, the link is in the description. If you want the code, it's on GitHub. The link to the previous and the next episode will also both be in the description. And I'd really appreciate it if you like these videos and you think they help you out, give the video a like and subscribe. Thank you very much and see you guys in the next episode.